What's going on guys, Josh here, checking in with another research review series. So today's uh, journal article is called The Effects of Short-Term Carbohydrate Restricted Diet on Strength and Power Performance. This is coming from Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, and it was done by Sawyer and colleagues at uh, Central Connecticut State University. So essentially what they did in this study is their goal was to see what effect would restricting carbohydrate intake for a seven day period have on strength and power output in trained athletes. So essentially what they did is they had a group of about 15 females and 15 males all with previous training experience and for a seven day period prior to doing their first assessment they had them eat their normal diet and they kept a dietary log. So during the initial habitual diet phase all the participants, the average was around 40% carbs, 20% protein, and then the rest fat. Um, so at the end of that seven day period, they did a test to determine some measures of strength and power. And what they actually measured were the following. They measured hand grip, um, they measured vertical jump, one rep max for bench press and for back squat. They did a max rep bench and a 30 second Wingate cycling test, which if you're not familiar with that, the wing gate is essentially a stationary bicycle where you're pedaling against a determined resistance and it's actually extremely challenging. You guys could do a search on YouTube and you'll see people do it for 30 seconds, get off and puke. It's uh, no joke. So anyhow, they measured all these variables initially as well as some measures of body fat and body composition, fat free mass, uh, things like that. And then after they did this initial test, they transitioned into a essentially a carbohydrate restricted diet where the participants were simply told the only thing that they were to restrict was their carbohydrate intake so they were given diet counseling and they were told that they were not allowed more than 50 grams of carbs every day and they were allowed to fill in the rest as they saw fit it wasn't very specific as far as what their macronutrient breakdown had to be or what their total caloric intake would have to be uh, following the seven days of doing this carbohydrate restricted diet, they essentially redid all the tests uh, that they did initially to see if there was any change between the normal diet versus the carbohydrate restricted diet um, with regard to the measures of strength and power. Now, what were the results of the study? Essentially, as far as body composition goes, there was a weight loss um, that was statistically significant between in both the men and the women. Uh, when they did do the carbohydrate restricted diet and there was also a reduction in total body water which is to be expected most of the time when you lose weight on a carbohydrate restricted diet it's as a result of losing water now interesting uh, to note is since the participants were not told that they had to uh, eat a certain amount of calories per se in the study they were essentially just allowed to eat whenever they wanted they were, their goal was just to restrict their carbohydrates they ended up um, reducing their total calories during the, the carbohydrate restricted portion of the diet for those seven days. So essentially there was a net change of roughly 380 calories per day uh, on average from the, their normal diet to the carbohydrate restricted diet and this is actually seen in many other studies. It probably has uh, to do with a combination of effects. They're, due to the higher fat and higher protein there is this increased satiety and then also if you are continually in a low carb diet you develop ketones in your in your blood which is a breakdown of fat which your body uses for fuel and there is some data to suggest that those also have an appetite suppressing effect so there was a reduction in calories even though they didn't intentionally do that now let's get to the meat of it who cares about their diet what happened to their power and their strength so interestingly the study has reports it as there was no change but there was actually an increase in all of the measures uh, from hand grip strength to one, one rep max, etc. And they were all um, essentially statistically significant with the exception of their, their bench press um, and the wind gate. So there were a few that were kind of like borderline, no real change, and there were a few that were actually positive change in the carbohydrate restricted group. So one thing that's relevant in, in this case is the fact that there was no crossover in the study design, so that's to say that essentially the groups did the test all together and then they did the experiment, which is the carbohydrate restriction together, and then they did the second test. 
Now, a way to kind of mitigate some of these effects of perhaps, you know, they were used to the test, um, or they had already, like, been primed, they had done it before, so now they wanted to do a better job, something like that. Um, all of those can kind of come into effect, so one way to get around this is you do a crossover design where you essentially split the group, so that way half of the group starts with the low-carb diet, half of the group starts with their normal diet, and then midway through the study, they both switch, essentially. That way you're kind of able to see if the results are um, more as a result of the experiment. Researchers did concede that the increase in strength is not likely a result of the carbohydrate restriction. So what are the practical applications of this? Basically it's that, you know, if you do a short-term carbohydrate restriction, you can lose weight and maintain your strength. That's the bottom line. And the key is that this was done only in trained athletes. So they defined, um, you know, these participants had at least a two-year training age, meaning that they have had experience lifting free weights for at least two years. So if you're a beginner and you're, for whatever reason, thinking about going on a low-carb diet for a week, these results will probably not translate to you. They might work, but you know this is not—it's not been studied in novice novice trainees. Excuse. Me. So you know if you compete in a sport where there's weight cuts, like weightlifting, powerlifting, things like that. Um, you know, personal take, I would say you shouldn't be messing around cutting weight until you're at a very high level. Um, but I know that people are going to do it anyhow. So one way to cut weight successfully, you know, if you don't have that much to lose, maybe a few uh, kilograms at most, you can lose weight successfully using a low-carb approach. Uh, and the key is that it's got to be short-term, because some of the previous studies on low-carb dieting has shown that there is actually a reduction in uh, performance when you do have a low-carb for longer periods of time, such as four to six weeks. So keep that in mind that this is only really for a seven-day period. Uh, so that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, put them below. And that's it guys, make sure to like and subscribe.